If you'd like to be following along in a few moments, we'll, uh, I'll be reading from Exodus 12, um, actually a little bit more than is in your bulletin, um, and then flipping over to the corresponding passage in Matthew. The word maundi comes from the Latin word for mandate, coming from Jesus mandating um, that we eat this meal in remembrance of Him. But even further back than that, God mandating the Passover feast for all time. The Father commanded the Passover meal and, and Christ on the night in which He was betrayed commanded all of us to eat this meal in remembrance. Remembrance not only of the greatest Old Testament redemptive event, that being the Passover and the Exodus, it's the greatest redemptive event in the Old Testament, but only a foreshadowing, only a foretaste, only a, 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 a bouquet of the real thing which would come in, which we celebrate tonight. Jesus having His last supper with His disciples. This is a night of remembrance. And we gather for that reason here tonight. I'm going to ask that you stand as we do each Sunday as I read God's Word. I'm going to be reading from Exodus chapter 12, beginning in the first verse. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, This month will be, or is to be for you, the first month, the month of your year. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family one for each household. If any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share one with their nearest neighbor, having taken into account the number of people there are. And you are to determine the amount of land needed in accordance with what each person will eat. The animals you choose must be year-old males without defect. You may take them from the sheep or the goats. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month when all the people of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the house where they eat the lambs. That same night, they are to eat the meat roasted over fire along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. Do not eat the meat raw or cooked in water, but roast it over the fire, head, legs, and inner parts. Do not leave any of it till morning. If some of it is left till morning, you must burn it. This is how you are to eat it. With your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. On the same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn, both men and animals. And I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood... I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is the day that you are to commemorate. For, for the generations to come, you shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. And then turning over to verse 21. 
Then Moses summoned all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go at once and select the animals for your families and slaughter the Passover lamb. Take a bunch of hyssop, dip it into the blood in the, in the basin, and put some of the blood on the top and on the sides of the door frame. Not one of you is to go out of the door of his house until morning. When the Lord goes through the land to strike down the Egyptians, he will see the blood on the tops and sides of the door frame and will pass over that doorway, and he will not permit the destroyer to enter your house and strike you down. And then very briefly, in Matthew, the corresponding passage in Matthew 26, beginning in verse 26, just three verses. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it. And gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and offered it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Father, we pray now that you would bless the reading and the hearing of this, your word. But Father, pray that we would see Christ, our Savior, alone. In his name we ask it. Amen. Be seated. Tonight, as we come to this feast, a commemoration of the first Passover in many ways, I want us to look at our passage in Exodus chapter 12 and, and see some things about the meal that the Israelites celebrated then that comes all the way forward to us tonight as we come to the Lord's table ourselves. The first point that I want to make is that the Passover meal was a family event. A family event. Jesus says, in, uh, or the writer Moses says that you're together with your household. And if one lamb is too much for your household, eat the meal with your nearest neighbor. We often forget that communion is a covenant family event. You cannot be a Christian in isolation. Let me say that again. You cannot be a Christian in isolation. You cannot claim to be a Christian and separate yourself from God's church. We are a fellowship. There is a sense of fellowship as we gather. Oftentimes, as you all know, we come down to the tables here, and we sit family amongst family in a time of fellowship, partaking of the body and blood of Christ. The event... <clears throat> of the Last Supper of Christ, was also done in fellowship. <clears throat> These twelve men were Jesus' family. He had spent the last three years with them. Perhaps he had known some of them all of his life. Some were extended family. And so as he comes, he brings a sense of true fellowship. The depth of real conversations, of real sharing that is so often missing in our churches today. We don't like to be transparent with each other. We don't like to get into deep conversations. As I was laughing with, I think it was the women's Bible study this week, we laughed about the extent of deep conversation, even at the supper or lunch table, as we have our quarterly luncheon, is often made up of only, hey, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine. Uh, what are your kids up to? And that's about as deep as we ever want to go. 
Rarely does someone look at you and say, tell me what the Lord is doing in your life these days. These are the kind of fellowship depths that we need to aspire to. Don't be just surface. We are a covenant community of Christ. We bear each other's burdens. We lift each other up in prayer. We should care about each other, not shoot each other in the back as Christians are so famous for doing. We need to understand that the Passover meal is a community. It is a family event. And we are in this church the family of God. Come and eat in community. The Lord commands the Israelites. Secondly, and perhaps most importantly, the lamb or goat chosen must be one without defect or defect, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Right? It must be perfect. Why does God prescribe that? Here, and then eventually through the law in Leviticus 22, sacrifices that were brought before the Lord were to be perfect. An animal without blemish. Can you imagine what would happen? Well, actually you probably can if you know your Old Testament because it did happen when they brought animals that were defective. Animals that were deformed in their rush to get rid of the bad parts of the herd the Israelites in their sinfulness would would bring poor choices for their sacrifice God requires perfection this is why the law could never save right we have the law in the Old Testament, but it was never meant to bring salvation because no one could keep it without blemish. No one could keep it perfectly. So when God, at least in His requirement for the multitude of sacrifices that had to be performed year after year, month after month, sometimes day after day, he at least required perfect animals. Oh, but our Savior, <laughs> our Savior is so perfect. Praise God for that. Our Savior, the one who, who mandates that we come to this table tonight, perfectly upheld His Father's will. Spoke only the words that His Father gave Him. Did all that His Father required of Him. His sacrifice even was perfect, satisfying the Father. Oh, we have a perfect Savior. When Jesus says to do this meal in remembrance of Him, it is of His perfect fulfillment in life and work for the will of His Father. He was the obedient one. He was the one who was without sin. The New Testament often refers to Him as the Lamb without blemish. In 1 Peter, we have these words written by the beloved Apostle. 1 Peter 1, 18. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as gold, or silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Jesus is the lamb without blemish. Perfect sacrifice. Our judgment, the judgment of God, would only be satisfied with perfection. And Christ 
and his life and death on the cross perfectly satisfies the Father's requirement. He perfectly suffered, perfectly lived, died, and rose again to completely satisfy his Father. Thirdly, we see in this meal that we are to re- the, this meal that we're to eat is redemptive. It is redemptive in nature. I say that not because there is some substance in the elements. We eat unleavened bread. We drink wine. But in the coming to the table, there is redemption and power. The Lord's Passover shows us this. In the latter part of chapter 12, Moses commands the Israelites to do a couple of things. And in doing that, we find both cleansing and protection. This is the redemptive nature of the meal that we partake of tonight. Cleansing and protection. The idea of using hyssop, which was just a kind of a brushy, little small bushy plant. It's used throughout the Bible to sprinkle things, not just blood, but other things. It was also the plant that was used in association with the healing of leprosy. Now recall that leprosy was a disease associated with sin. There was no cure for leprosy. You had to be healed of leprosy. You had to be cleansed of your leprosy. You did not go see the doctor for leprosy. You went to see the priest. And hyssop played a role in that purification and in that treatment. Psalm 51 reminds us of this very fact in verse 7, cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. There is this cleansing aspect to the meal in which we will partake of tonight. But there is also this idea of protection. Notice what Moses says to the people when they go to take this hyssop. He says, you take the hyssop and you put the blood on your door frame, on the sides and on the top. Why? So that when the angel of death comes, he will see the blood and what? Pass over your house. The blood provides protection to the Israelites. So it is with the blood of Christ. When we do this in remembrance of Him, we do this in remembrance of His life and His death. That His blood not only cleanses us, plunge beneath that flood, lose all our guilty stains, but His blood is the ultimate protection. His blood covers us. His blood saves us. A.W. Pink, the famous theologian, perhaps stretches the imagination a touch when he makes this point in referring to this very passage in Exodus 12. He says that The Hebrew word for basin is really an Egyptian word for threshold. And they would have slaughtered the lamb on the threshold. And and what he believes is really being said here is to take hyssop and reach down and swab up some blood from the threshold and paint it on each side of your door and on the lintel across the top. And pink sees in this very act a foreshadowing of the cross. With the blood trickling down on Christ's head from the thorn of crowns 
His hands outstretched on each side. His feet nailed to the cross. A beautiful sight for us. A powerful image. Christ's blood shed for you and me to cleanse us from our sins, to protect us as brothers and sisters in Christ. So tonight we will come to the table. We'll come as He has commanded. We will eat and drink in fellowship, in community. When we pass the bread, we'll hold it and eat it all together. When we pass the cup, we'll hold it and drink it all together. We'll not only celebrate it in community of, of fellowship, but we'll celebrate this perfect one who was sacrificed for us to cleanse us and to protect us. All of that given for you and for me. So this night, Jesus begins His journey to His death. His journey to the cross. Along the way, He will be beaten. Along the way, He'll be spit upon. Along the way, He'll be flogged and stripped naked. Enduring all of that because He loves you that much. Let's pray.